So this will set up a bases loaded situation and no outs. For the, they'll have a play at any base. And boy, now is there gonna be a lot of, a lot of things happening. You're gonna see a lot of bodies moving. Creighton will obviously be playing inside the baseline. Because the first, the first and primary play will be to the home, to home plate. Well, all Christina Freeman need to do is lift a fly ball to even medium depth because the outfielders are so shallow. They might be able to run back and catch the ball, but it's going to be tough for them to right themselves and come in with a relay to the plate. Exactly. Very, very excellent point, Terry, is that if they have to turn around and chase the ball at all, uh, I think uh, Green, with her speed, will have no problem scoring at all. Yep, bottom of the 30th inning. We've gone this far. There are no outs. And I, I think that's the biggest thing because it changes the options on defense. But they've been here before and they've been able to make the play. Well, we'll see. Ball is high. Kelly, you know, and this is a difficult situation for the pitcher because you don't have any place to put it. But to put that person, that's right. It's up to bat now, and you know, and you may have a tendency to to let up a little bit. The winning run is in the person of Charmel Green at third base. Anybody else doesn't count. Ground ball back to the pitcher to home for one, and that'll do it. There's one. So Green is out at the plate on the force out. Simmons moves to third. Demiglio is down at second, and on the fielder's choice, Freeman is at first, and this is Galen Hoshide. Excellent play by Kelly Brookhart. She came off in, again, in good fielding, in good fielding position. They're still playing to cut off the run. You know, it was a difficult, it's a difficult thing to turn around. You know, she, she was just out there a minute ago, and she threw four balls to walk somebody, and then she has to come back and concentrate to throw the ball in the strike zone. Hoshide, first ball again. hitting, to home for one, to first, they no got the play. double play! And they're Bases out of it! Bases loaded, no outs, and Utah doesn't score again! Woo! What can you say after that? That is just incredible. We've gone through 30 innings. That has got to take some air from Utah. Creighton has just played excellent defense. I mean, it, it, the strategy, load the bases up, give yourself a force play anywhere, work. It's just classic, right straight out of the textbook. Uh, you know, if you're, gonna, if you're gonna write a textbook on how to coach this stuff, they just did it, and, and they got everything they needed in a, in a, in a great. <laughs> that's, that's just about right, what you're seeing here. <laughs> Dear Mom. <laughs> to, to let the people understand why that fits is because this game was played on a Saturday night before Mother's Day. It started at 6 p.m., and it is now seven minutes after midnight. It is Sunday morning. Mother's Day. <laughs> Oh, what a ball game, Tori. It's a strike, backed her off the plate, but it was a strike, one and one. Swing and a miss. Swing and a miss. She wasn't even ready for that pitch. One ball, two strikes. Got to maintain your 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 posture of ready and be ready to attack all the time. Ooh. One out. Away. <laughs> Amy Timmel, the leadoff hitter in the lineup. She'll be followed by Amy Colley, the on deck hitter, if they get that far. I think that was an error of fatigue, too. <laughs> 25 hits for Utah, but they trail in this ball game one to nothing. We're in the bottom of the 31st. Timmel takes a strike. So unless, nice pitch. unless they can get a run, there will be the if necessary game on Sunday. 
Have we got any times or anything yet? <laughs> Probably, but I don't know what they would be. I would think it'd be after after 12 o'clock noon. That hurt. No balls and two strikes. At least Heidi can still laugh. <laughs> that hurt. That bit real good. We'll just sit back. How about we just sit back and let the crowd tell you what happens? A rise ball. There they can is. do it. It's a shortstop. That's it. Ball game. Incredible as it may seem. It's 31 innings before we get a run, and it decided it ended up being the deciding run. Well, now I got an interesting. I got an inter, in, interesting question to put forward to you. All right, now you come back, and this is a championship. This is a championship game tomorrow. And it seems like both of your pitchers, you're gonna have, both of the teams are gonna have to go with the second pitcher. Yeah, well, for Creighton at least, Jenny Ruzic, while she might be number two in line in the rotation, is definitely not a backup pitcher. I mean, she, she knows her stuff and she's really been an integral part of this Creighton ball club. But this has taken its toll, I think, on both teams and uh, it's not gonna be an easy thing, but you know, the, here you get a good look at Utah. Joe Evans just letting them know, you know, we had a lot of opportunities, just didn't get the job done. And uh, now it's a one game tournament. Well, neither one of these teams, I can't say enough about the coaching of these teams and the preparation. You know, it is, they are just in, you know, this is such an incredible ball game. That, you know, they're coaching, you know, they're coaching. They were all prepared so well, you know, for all the various different situations and, you know, they presented them to each other. Uh, you know, it's a credit to both the programs. Well, Kelly Brookhart gets the win. Janet Womack will take the loss and both pitchers went the distance. There you see a happy Mary Higgins, a jubilant uh, Kelly Brookhart. The Creighton Lady Jays they have come all the way through the loser's bracket from the very first day to force the if necessary game against Utah. No balls Utah. and a strike to Lori McGill as we're in the top of the 31st inning. Grounded to the left side, Hoshide has it. McGill's got good Safe. speed and the ball goes by first base but it's backed up by the right field. A good play by Fortingham to come in to back up the play. I hate to say this but I think that was just a good old fashioned air of uh, uh, Fatigue, you know, frustration. Look at Jan Womack on the mound. She's 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 squatting down there in a catcher's position, uh, pulling on her hair. She's she's tired, and I think uh, Hoshide out there just just kind of threw that ball in the dirt with. Uh, so Creighton's able to get their leadoff batter on here in the top of the 31st on the air, throwing error by Hoshide. And Herod takes that first pitch for a ball. Again, it's high. Throw down to first base, and it almost, almost got by Timmel. Don't think there would have been an advance, though, because Forthingham was over there backing up. As well she should be. That's right. But that's where you've got it at this time in the game. You have to make all the right plays. You can't forget that. You know, you, oh, well, wait a minute. I'm just going to stand out here and watch yeah. this ball game. Foul bunt attempt. Two balls and a strike. I know we've said this so many times, but boy, you just got to make sure that you get the ball down. And, you know, if it's a good pitch, you've got to get the ball well, we've down. Seen, we've seen bunt attempts popped into double plays. And, I mean, so, I mean, you, I guess you can't say it enough. Lifted high, straight away. Hoshide calling for it out by the second base bag, and she makes the catch, and we have one out. Kelly Brookhart now. Laura McGill has some speed. I don't know how many times. Uh, 
uh, how the how the injury to her knee has has affected uh, her foot speed, whether the, the the stolen bases that she had was before or after her surgery. There she goes. There she goes. The throw down to second base. The throw was there, but it was off the mark, and McGill has stolen second. And now we've got the opportunity again, uh, unless she hits the gap with a you know with a pitch. Or, or one down the lines, Tori. I, uh, I still think it's going to take two hits to two hits to score. So McGill facing an 0-1 count, now they're and they're going to put her on. So this slows the game down a bit. But they still have to be cognizant of a balk. A balk, she didn't come set and present herself. Well, that makes a difference now. She still has to come set and present herself on the mound. I believe the third base umpire, I think, I believe the third base umpire over there called a balk on her. It was. even though she's she's standing there or, or she's intentionally walking she still has to stand she still has to come set present herself in in the set position with both feet on the rubber and and throw the ball outside and Womack was looking toward the the bench to find out what coach Evans wanted her to do should she continue to pitch or intentionally walk and they said put her on so that sets out a sets up a force out position at second base they do have one out and uh, Tracy Rice is up. Yeah, the public address people just said it was an, Ill, they called it, all they called it was an illegal pitch and, the, and they didn't say exactly what it was, but I'm sure guessing that that's what it was, that that's what happened. So now, Joe Evans again out to talk to her team. Jan Womack is obviously upset out there over the illegal pitch. I think Coach Evans is out there to try to calm her down a little bit, talk to her. You know, we've come this far, we can't can't quit now. Oh no, and and they're not. See, the thing about Utah is not that they can afford to lose this game, but they're not fighting for survival in Creighton is. So they've yeah. got they've got different reasons for doing what they're doing. And you so. Know, Sometimes you can get a little complacent when you know, you, you know, when you feel like, well, you know, this is a real difficult position that that you know where you need to w only win one ball game. Yeah. Uh, Strike call. You know, I go back to the the National Masters Fast Pitch Tournament of last year. Uh, team from from Maryland only had to win one ball game, and they ended up getting beat twice. Fly ball to right field, get, 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 try. get the run in. Here comes McGill, the throw to the plate is off the line. And Creighton takes a one to nothing lead. And that Bach, that Bach has really come into play. 